Hey guys, this is Danny with Pwn CNC, and I've got one of the first Onefinity Elite machines sitting right here on my assembly table. I'm gonna pull it out of the box, let you guys see what's going on. It is as close to production as the very first production one off the line. Let's open them up, and we'll uh, put the machine together here on my assembly table, and I'll go over um, some details about it, as well as uh, hooking up a spindle and letting you see that run. Let's get started. Uh. What I'm unboxing here is the Woodworker Elite Series Onefinity CNC machine. It is huge compared to my machinist. Okay, what I have here is the white, uh, the right Y um, rails, the left Y rails, and the uh, and the X gantry, the main X gantry. Now. Since I'm not covering the actual installation of the machine, Onefinity can easily handle that. I'm gonna focus more on uh, a quick little overview, letting you see all the important bits during the installation. Um, see the upgraded features like this new Z20, uh, Z-axis. Um, the motors, of course, uh, cable chains, and that sort of thing. And of course, eventually, um, the most important part, getting to the spindle, how it plugs in, how it connects, all right, back to the assembly. As you can see here, we've got four mounting screws to hold that Z20 axis into position, which very easy to install. Here I'm bringing in the Masso Touch controller, bringing in the electronics box, the actual power. I've got a pre-production controller arm there in silver. Uh, yours will be black. Looking up the main wire between the controller box, the power box, and the um, touch controller. Next, we're plugging in the various homing sensor power connectors. The way they can have power, uh, this is the uh, infrared homing. Then on to plugging in all of the various uh, motors, um, sensors, and that sort of thing around the machine. We've got a couple here in the front left, and we have one over on the front right. And of course, here on the uh, X gantry, we have a couple on the left. And of course, the mini controller or plugs that go into the back of the touch controller, and eventually uh, mounting the touch controller onto, um, in my case, the prototype arm, which yours won't be prototype, of course. I will take this opportunity to point out that I've got several 3D printed parts on this machine that you can completely ignore. Um, every part on the production machines will be injection molded and high quality. All right, now that everything is plugged in, we're going to flip it on and watch this super fast boot up sequence. There we go, we're ready to go. All right, so I'm just gonna enter in the default password here. I'm sure the documentation will have the information there. And then once we've got it all set up, I'm gonna push the uh, emergency stop just to make sure that it's functional. Then we're gonna trigger the homing um, sequence. It's a little slow at first just for the homing part. Um, I'm sure there may be a way to speed that up. Um, I will definitely be looking into that. But aside from this initial boot up, the machine is blazingly fast and I will demonstrate that here in just a little bit. All right, let's switch over to the jogging screen. I'm going to uh, put it on continuous movement and of course I've got the feed rate up to 100% and then I can move the uh, machine based on these uh, on-screen buttons. One of the nicest things I like about this machine is the fact that you can go right up to the edge of the, of the machine. It will slow down and stop right at the end. There's no, no more worrying about banging into the edges. Okay, ignore the fact that this is a 3D printed piece. Again, yours will be, yours will be injection molded. But you can see I've got a simple little uh, GX12 six pin connector right there on the bottom of the controller on the back of the touch. We're gonna plug in the uh, 
spindle control, I'm sorry, the control cable is what I call it, into the machine, into the touch controller as well as into the uh, side of our VFD. We'll turn that on and we'll run a little manual test here. Just uh, flip it to manual, hit run, turn the uh, potentiometer, and you're good to go. You stop and it's all um, functional. Now we're going to flip it back to manual, or I'm sorry, back to automatic. We're going to jump over to the setup screen into the main spindle and we're going to enter in the spindle parameters. Basically telling it that it is a 24,000 RPMs machine. It takes six seconds to uh, spin up and six seconds to spin down, which are what those two uh, remaining piece, uh, settings are there. Now we switch over to the program screen. We can hit spindle CW, which is spindle turn clockwise. Well, I've already got the spindle running at 6,000 from a previous test, uh, but we can change the RPMs by using the MIDI screen, change it to S3000, change it to 3,000 RPMs. S12,000 turns it to 12,000 RPMs, and we can see that reflect on the uh, VFD there on the screen. Now, I know there were some questions in previous videos regarding uh, the cable chain, so I wanted to give you a nice little close-up of that. Uh, this is the X gantry, um, the left side, and here's the right side where the cables go through. Here is our Y uh, left side, as well as going back behind the controller. Some of you may be interested in this little dongle thing. I picked this up separate um, from the Masso website. I'm sure there's some online available um, at other places, but I went ordered it straight from them. Uh, this came in, it comes with a little connector on the end. It allows you to control the X, Y, Z position with a little control instead of having to punch on the keypad. So uh, let's uh, install it real quick. Installation is super easy. According to the inside label of the Masso Touch, uh, we do need to remove these uh, the the connector, basically the gray connector piece. It uh, adds bulk to the connector, and we don't need that bulk inside of the controller. And of course, we're going to remove all four screws, which then folds open the controller itself. You can see there I've got a white wire that is actually the e-stop. It is coming very soon. Um, I'm waiting for a little board, uh, which we can then plug it into the G3, and I'll demonstrate that later. Um, we'll plug it in the touch or the, the dongle here, right inside. Okay, so let's switch it over to uh, probing, continuous, and we'll put the uh, feed rate all the way up to 100%. Switch our little control here. Let's switch it to a uh, Y, and then I can just turn. If I want to go really small, I can reduce it down to slow it down here on the uh, controller. Switch it down to even more finer tilting. It's just barely moving. Uh, that way I can narrow in my Z. Um, if I wanted to run the Z, I could switch the Z control or even the X. The nice thing about this is you can go all the way over to the edge and it completely stops. It knows the width. It won't bang into the side. It just stops where it needs to stop. Hey guys, I hope this was helpful. Uh, be sure to leave any comments or questions down below. Uh, reach out to us at support at pwncnc.com if you have additional questions. Um, I will demonstrate the uh, e-stop um, next week whenever I actually set this up. Um, my next video, I'm going to be setting this uh, the machine up onto a QCW table with the uh, folding legs. Um, and then I will run a test with the whole or I'll run a test cut with the with the whole setup um, and then I'll demonstrate how the e-stop works with the uh, spindle um, I'll demonstrate all that later um, today is just set up uh, plugging everything in making sure it all functions and answer any of your questions so yeah thank you for joining me um, I know uh, Clinton and I were in the chat window um, answering as many questions as we could but if we didn't get to any be sure to add it down below. Don't forget, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.